Is purchasing a home on your financial to-do list? Well, if so, then this video is gonna help you understand how at least we prepared to purchase our first home together. Stay tuned. If you're new, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you like what you see here, you know what to do. Go ahead and click the like button, subscribe, and turn the notification bell on. But without further ado, let's jump right into these tips. So the first things first, you want to start early. I didn't realize how much I was preparing for this purchase in 2017 until after the fact, but that's when I started my personal journey towards paying off debt and, you know, creating some space for myself financially so that I could live the life that I desire. And so, you know, as soon as you have the thought that you want to purchase a home or if there's something in you that says, huh, maybe I need to get these finances in order so that I can do more things with my life, that's the time that you really want to become intentional and strategic so that you are positioned in a good way to be able to make choices and have as many options at your leisure. Along with the starting early, right, which would include, you know, managing your money, um, starting to save, learning how to transform your money mindset to prepare yourself for these larger financial, you know, milestones that you'll be crossing at some point you definitely also want to speak to a realtor and a lender because they're two separate things right so you want to talk to a realtor and they're going to talk to you about certain things um, that they are licensed to to do right I am not either of those things so I can only share as much as I'm aware of and know but then you also want to talk to a lender because they're going to be able to let you know financially what boxes need to be checked in order for you to be prepared to purchase a home and get through the underwriting process close get your keys and live your best life so you know they're going to let you know whether you know your debt to income ratio is you know too high or they're going to let you know whether you know you have to have a certain amount of income that is going to get you qualified to purchase the home within the range that you want so on and so forth so that's going to be a part of that starting early process which is really going to equip you to have you know the roadmap to success when it comes to purchasing a home and to be honest it took us a couple of years also because you know we are entrepreneurs so there's a couple of things financially that are significantly different than those who have a nine to five if you want that information then let me know and i can speak to it but you know again it's never too early to begin creating this plan that's going to help you have the leeway the runway and the bandwidth to be able to make a decision like purchasing a home when you feel ready so if now is the time then what are you doing now to be strategic and intentional about your money journey that is going to help you be positioned well later on learning to manage your money is a like its own tip <laughs> because you don't need to learn how to manage your money just so that you can prepare to purchase a home once you're a homeowner you're a homeowner so you, it's on you there is no maintenance that's going to be able to cover everything you're taking uh, that's going on in your home like you are 100% liable for this structure and the things that might come along with it. So managing your money is going to be helpful for you to be able to practice before you purchase the home and leading up to, but it's also going to be something that helps you to not be house poor and feel like you're able to manage having a home financially once it's purchased, right? Um, being able to pay for maintenance and being able to still eat and live the way that you like, right? Because you're not scrimping because you have, you know, purchased a home that is beyond what you can actually afford in the long run. And so that's a process in and of itself that you want to dig into. Money management, while there are a lot of great general tips and I talk a lot about it and I help my students learn how to manage their money better, the thing about it is that it's so individualized because each person is different that you have to have a system that helps you learn how you are going to best manage your money. So um, don't give up if you try something and it fails, if you try something and it's hard, if you try something and it doesn't work, you know, 100%, you definitely want to keep going, give some different options a shot when you're creating that mindful money system is the way that I call it, um, and be able to help yourself build the self-awareness, get the data from tracking yourself and whatnot, and executing a plan to see how you can best manage your money so that you have all of the leeway and space and financial bandwidth possible. I talk to too many women, okay, making good money who don't have this. And it's really important because you don't want to find yourself up against a wall, stressed and overwhelmed because you didn't check this box. Now, having a 
emergency fund, okay? I personally say, you know, I ask the question what feels like it would be the best option as far as an emergency fund. For a starter emergency fund on a very base level, I say one month's worth of living expenses because, you know, I started personally with $1,000 and that was actually really helpful. But if we think about it, let's say something happens with work, you're sick or something, whatever, having a month covered gives you a month to figure out what you can do moving forward to be able to make up that income if need be so i say at a very basic level to have one month's emergency fund and then be able to say okay beyond that what would really feel good for me to see in the bank account and for me to have um, the mental space to think about other things start checking off some other financial boxes so on and so forth but if you don't have an emergency fund you definitely want to make sure you have this before you move on to other things because um, not having this box checked will lead to further strain and struggle as you move forward in your financial freedom journey so um, whether that's one month of emergency fund for you whether you got it like that and you can save three months six months 12 months listen baby the bigger the better um to some extent but you definitely want to make sure that you cover yourself so if and when something occurs it's just an inconvenience instead of an emergency now when you're saving for your emergency fund and then that box is checked what you also want to do is think about paying down your debt to whatever you know aggression level that you can how how aggressive can you be in paying down your debt to a manageable level whatever that looks like for you they say 30 percent or under is great as far as utilization i prefer to stay under 10 percent utilization I actually stopped using using credit cards for a long long time um and then we've started creeping back into it with discipline and a strategic and intentional plan I know this is probably a surprise because I haven't really talked about it much um, for anyone who knows me, but if you want to hear more about it, let me know in the comments. Um, but you want to manage your debt and make sure that you pay it down. And there's a couple of reasons why. First off, it's going to you know increase or decrease your debt to income ratio, right? So if your debt goes down, your income goes further. Then they told me the calculation, my lender told me at one point and I asked them to tell me again, baby. <laughs> I was confused, but all I know is like, they're gonna check your debt to income ratio and it needs to be in a specific realm, in a specific area for you to be able to get approved. And so paying down, you know, high consumer debt, credit card debt, um, to some extent paying down your student loans and such like that will be helpful um, to increase your credit score as well. So your income will go further as your debt goes down, right? That space between the two, you are more, um trustworthy as a lender is what it will look like right because debt means i let you borrow something and you paying it back means you're a good borrower you pay your stuff back and that's what the underwriting process is really doing in my very plain understanding of it is that they want to ensure that you are not going to default on your loan and they can't do it 100 percent, but they want to mitigate they want to reduce the likelihood of you defaulting on the loan um, because they feel like they can trust you and that you're going to pay the loan back. So um, paying your debt down is going to help to show them that you are a trustworthy lender. And then also it's going to oftentimes, I am not a financial advisor or a financial, okay, uh, what is this called? Professional, not certified or whatever the case is, but my husband is, if you have questions. Um, it's going to increase my credit score let me say that okay let me just be safe when we pay down our debt our credit scores shoo, shoo, they, they skyrocketed okay skyrocketed um and this has happened for my students too <laughs> just like this student here i'll just put a little screenshot in last year she was preparing to purchase a home and um she her credit score was 824 baby okay so uh you paying down your debt is going to really make you a better lender in the eyes of someone judging whether you're trustworthy or not with a loan and that's a very plain jane okay way of me explaining that um a lot of people ask like how do you increase your credit score what are your like paying your paying back the loan is going to help a lot of the times unless you have very specific nuanced factors that come into play this is why you speak to a lender okay um to make sure that you get that support that licensed certified support but anywho what is your plan to pay down your debt and what like range are you going to keep it within for it to be manageable 
in the process of you purchasing your home and having less debt when you purchase a home gives you more cash flow gives you more bandwidth again to manage home ownership which comes with a lot of expenses in and of itself so let me know in the comments is home ownership something that you see for yourself is it something that you want to do what city are you hoping to purchase a home in i would love to know i'm in las vegas nevada that's where we have purchased our first home about five minutes from my family which is really nice we used to live like 20 minutes away but again let's get chatty in the comments and talk about all of this the next thing that you want to do is to save for your down payment so um, depending on your situation again while you talk to a realtor and you talk to a lender you'll be able to figure out you know about what you should be saving to be prepared to purchase the home as far as down payment costs closing costs and also i think that you should that's why you have your emergency fund but you should have a cushion an extra cushion because things may fluctuate and change depending on what the market looks like depending on your specific financial situation um but you want to begin to save that down payment and there's a lot of like first-time home buyers uh, programs and things like that again your realtor and your lenders will know much more detail about that what that could look like for you they say 20 percent, and that helps you to get rid of pmi which is you know your your mortgage insurance but that's insuring the bank from what i understand and it's not insuring you so you're paying for the bank to be covered if you default on your own loan from what i understand check with yolanda okay <laughs> i am not a licensed in that way i can only speak from my own personal experience and understanding so again um having that savings set aside somewhere where you are not touching it where it is specifically set for that is going to be key because they're going to be asking about your bank accounts <laughs> they're going to want to be all up in your business so they're going to ask about you know what your bank account is looking like and i don't know it's not i don't think it's screenshots or something but they're going to ask for like statements that's the word statements and they want to be able to also to some extent from my understanding see a certain amount of money in there so that they know you're not going to default on this loan okay so you want to make sure that you have this money set in a place where you're able to have a paper trail that shows that you have funds you know sitting somewhere um for you to be able to draw on for closing costs for down payment we had an earnest deposit that we have paid because we you know got a new build um and so there's just a lot of different nuanced costs that come up when you're purchasing a home we wanted to buy down our rate i think or we um you know wanted to make sure that we were able to lock in a specific rate because the rates are going up right now or they were the last time i looked or heard um and so there's just a lot of different nuanced costs we had to pay for our home appraisal just a whole bunch of stuff every situation from what my realtor says is oftentimes different so your specific situation is going to be specific to you and you're going to want to talk to your realtor your lender whoever else is on your money team your cpa or bookkeeper someone that does your taxes or whatever to make sure things are in alignment and look at rights when you get ready to purchase this home but again you want to make sure that you save for the down payment and then i would say have some cushion beyond that if you're able you have your emergency fund but really that's supposed to be for emergencies only um it never hurts to have liquid cash when you're purchasing a home there's also moving costs so you are what are you who's gonna move your stuff like is it gonna be you are you going to hire you're gonna have to like eat out for some amount of time usually unless you have like you're, you're gonna have to grow like there's just so many little things that you have to purchase and 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 buy when you're transitioning and moving that you want to kind of buffer your um, down payment your closing costs with extra funds if you are able all right baby this is a lot of stuff two more tips and then a bonus and we're out of here so next one next one's next all right keep all of your documents organized in order in one place so that when they're asking you about this stuff it's easy for you to pull it out scan it send it over lord the documentation just so again they want to have a paper trail they want to be able to ensure to some extent that they want to mitigate that you will not default on the loan they're going to be all up in your business they want your w-2s they want your tax returns they want your babies they don't want your babies but you want to make sure that you have all of this stuff in a place that is easy for you to find easy for you to transport to scan whatever the case may be when they ask for it and sometimes they might ask for you know things over and over again depending on the situation 
Um, and you don't want to be scrambling trying to find that stuff. So organization in your money journey is going to be something that really helps to, you know, position you well and make your life easier. Buying a home is also mental and emotional. I had a student ask this week, you know, how to emotionally prepare, how to be, how to know when you're ready emotionally to purchase a home. I'm not so sure that you can be 100% ready emotionally to purchase a home, especially if you grew up with either financial insecurity, never grew up with anyone else really purchasing homes and being homeowners. Like if it's not your experience, you may never be ready until you actually do it and that's okay. Otherwise, you wanna have self-awareness to know how you handle change and frustration and things not going your way and um, you know just things pivoting and plot twists and all that fun stuff because sometimes purchasing a home can be like that. You might put an offer in and then it gets denied. You might think you're getting ready to close and then underwriting asks for something else, okay? Um, so you want to be taking time to take good care of yourself. This way in our community, it's called Wealth and Wellness University. How can we build wealth without burning ourselves out? You know, making sure that we're mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually well. So take care of yourself in this process because it's going to make it so much easier to manage the emotional tax it takes to purchase a home sometimes. Last one's last and the bonus, so stick around. Um, you don't wanna let lifestyle creep get in the way of you preparing yourself to purchase a home. So a lot of the ladies I work with have either recently gotten a raise, they have increased their income, they've doubled their income, they're making more money than they've ever made before. And it's nice in a lot of ways because now they have this cash flow that they can do a lot of things with. But there's also this thing called lifestyle creep, right? That can bite you in the butt and eat up your money and keep you from making progress in your long-term financial goals. And so you want to be, like I said, managing your money, being really mindful about how your mental and emotional state affects your finances and have a plan that includes spending, you know, joyfully, right? I'm not saying to scrimp and sacrifice and just like don't do anything ever, but make sure that you plan for the things that you want to spend money on. And then you plan for the unplanned and unexpected, which is having a miscellaneous line item in your budget. I can talk more about money management in another video. Again, the comments is where you vote, baby. Like, let me know what videos and things like that you wanna see. Um, and then I can make sure to attend to those because that's what I'm here to do is to serve you. So lifestyle creep could be a huge threat to your progress and preparation when it comes to you know getting ready to buy a home and then after the fact i know when we were moving into our brand new house it's shiny and new it's cute aesthetic or whatever i feel like you know the instagram house or whatnot i was like i'm gonna buy this and that and then tiktok is gonna know exactly how you feel it's gonna show you things amazon home has been popping up on my instagram and so it's really easy to you know spend fast when you're excited about a transition that maybe you never thought that you would experience or is really happening and you only ever saw it in your mind. And so while of course we're still going to do things like decorate our home, um, we're gonna do it in a strategic and intentional way that doesn't put us in a bad position now that we're homeowners, overspending right when we're moving in so that we can get used to like having a mortgage and different things like the transition of our finances in general anyway. Now the bonus the bonus is right like i said that mental and emotional piece are you taking good care of yourself in the process make sure you're sleeping are you eating whole foods are you moving your body to some extent are you spiritually you know filling your cup and how are your relationships so that you have places that you can have conversations about this it may or may not be your friends it may or may not be your family and uh, you know if you don't have anywhere that you get to talk about money and how to level up how to build wealth without burning yourself out get on a, an intentional strategic plan um, to make your money work for you instead of feeling like you're trading your time for money for the rest of your life then you can go ahead and you can click the link in the description to apply to chat with someone on our team it might even be me depending on the day and for us to really just learn more about what your money goals are and if there's alignment for us to potentially support you other than that, you know, I'm cheering you on in this process of purchasing your first home. It has been a roller coaster and a doozy of an experience for us. Lots of lots of ups and downs, twists and turns, um, but we are so grateful to now be in our home. And I want so many other women to have this experience of like 
waking up in your own space, being able to do whatever you want with it, um, you know, uh, being able to build wealth. We had our closing and actually I'll make sure to link our last video in the description as well. We went to our closing with our kids. We dressed up. We made it an event. You know what I mean? Um, because this is how we build generational wealth one financial milestone at a time. Your milestone might start today with filling out the application to chat with our team. It might be you starting to save today, paying down debt today, creating a plan today, watching another video, making sure you're subscribed so that you get all the rest of the gems around money and mindset, whatever it is. Regardless, I'm cheering you on. You can do this. It's on your way, whatever you envision for yourself. I speak love, joy, peace, prosperity, and abundance on you now and forevermore. Until next time, gems.